Hi, in this video, I'm going to compare DTI with GQI in tumor pre-surgical planning and tell you why you should consider a more advanced model. A brief introduction here, DTI model diffusion weighted signal using a diffusion tensor and the data acquisition usually including um, 30 to 60 diffusion weighted image at a p-value of 1,500. For GQI, is using a more advanced model to try to handle some limitation. And the method is also applicable to existing DTI data set or a more advanced data set that include multiple p-value. So for a fair comparison today, we're going to use the same data, um, but to construct it using one using DTI, another using GQI. The data set we're going to use is the uh, publicly available data set uh, at Open Neural website. The repository is a brain tumor connectomic data. I'm going to pick patient number 29. It was a 45 year old male patient um, with an infiltrated tumor at the left frontal lobe. The data acquisition, including a lower p-value and also a higher p-value, but we're going to pick the one similar to the DTI acquisition. So if, if you download the data from the Open Neural website, the, the data will be stored in different folder. The one that under the DWI are the, the data we're going to analyze here. The format storing the data is called a native format, and they will start analyzing it. The B table will be stored as a .bvol and .vvac. And you will see here there's a, another set of data called a PA data. There's a diff opposite face encoding data for correcting face distortion. But today we're just only going to use the anterior post to posterior face encoding direction. So start DSS Studio. Here to process this data, click on the first button, open source image, and click on the AP underscore DWI that then I that you use it. DSS Studio read the BVAR BVAC button in matching the DWI data. And here, just click OK. This is to generate um, aggregating this suite file into just one, list, and they will start SRC that suite. It. So, for this, from this data, we will proceed with reconstruction. So, once the SRC file reconstructed, we'll click on the second uh, step, that's the reconstruction step and open the SRC file um, we just generated. So once the we open this SRC file, it will show that a window showing the mask. But if we go into the reconstruction step, here we could click here to check raw data. Click on this tab, you would see the different B value data showing up here, including the one is zero, we call B not the title B zero data. The low p value is 700, higher p value around 3000 data. So, for a similar comparison, we would just remove the lower and higher p value using the remove row button here. So, if we click here, it would remove the one that being selected. And we could repeat it doing this and only keep the b value that's around the DTI acquisition range. So, to just to simulate how DTI acquisition looks like. And once you remove those, I can save as a new SRC file. I did that previously, so we could speed up with the step and generate, open this one with only the DT acquisition range. So I can just pull this in here or open it in the step T2 reconstruction. So open this SRC file. The same, there's a mask showing up, but we can double check and click on the first tab to make sure that this B value only the 1,201 being um, demand here. So now we can run the reconstruction. So for DTI reconstruction here, we set that the DTI method and click run reconstruction. You will see DSS Studio generate one based on DTI. And for comparison, the GQI reconstruction, we could set it a GQI and then click run reconstruction. So it's based on the same data. One is a DTI model, another one is the GQI method. 
So here we we'll compare how they look like in under chartography. We click on the step T3 fiber tracking and open the one we just generated from DTI method. The background map is the FA map. This is an isotropy map, uh, suggesting the integrity of fiber pathway. So if we look into the detail here, those fiber orientation are resolved by the tensor model. And you could see that in the tumor region, there's an empty region shown by the FA map. So this may give you an impression that while the tumor may have been destroyed and Click on the fiber tracking. The chartography, DTI chartography, will show the similar information like the tumor will destroy a large region of the fiber. And as if you are a neurosurgeon, you may, you may think, well, this tumor already destroyed a lot of fibers, is going in and then take a, a larger recession. Um, and then hoping that this this would reduce the remission rate, um, but it, does this um, really having an empty region here? Are there any fiber remaining? Um, that's what we don't know. So here we could make a comparison by just checking the GQI reconstruction method. So he this one, the results are based on the GQI reconstruction method on the same side, but it's showing a very different picture. So the anisotropy social map, you we look at the side-by-side -side comparison. For example, here at the left frontal region, let's pull it up at this region, and also the one based on the TTI. You show there's a huge difference, even by looking at the fiber mapping and also the and a sort of map. So both are on the same size number. Let's see, size number 30. Um, for DTI methods, it's suggesting that the tumor already destroy all the fibers, but in but GQI methods showing a lot of fibers still align up. Um, and it's not like the, the there is no fiber remaining in the tumor region. So even if we run the fiber tracking based on GQI, methods is suggesting that there are still fiber that have been pushed around, been compressed. Uh, even there are some high and be value region as opposed to no and be regions here. So for this case, it is in the frontal lobe. So perhaps it doesn't really matter whether you see this picture or this picture going in, maybe probably doesn't matter. But imagine if you were um, operating a tumor in the occipital lobe where um, op optic pathway really matters. And if you look at the DTI chartography, you, you could probably just end up with a larger section taking out a big chunk of fiber. As opposed to GQI chartography, you may keep uh, those fiber that, that can be functionally critical. So this is what I would suggest that if you are using the even if you are acquiring DTI data, you should reconstruct it using GQI methods instead of a DTI method. And you may wonder why DTI methods showing that it's empty regions in the FA map. And the reason is that the FA calculation is based on the ratio between the ratio diversity and the ratio radio diversity. So if you look at the ratio diversity map, there will be a slightly hyper intensity regions here due to peritumal edema. And also for the radial diversity, there is also a hyperintensity region due to the peritumal edema. So if the SO diversity and radial diversity are both higher, then FA would drop substantially. So it's not due to the fiber already being destroyed, it's just due to the peritumal edema and tensor model has a hard time trying to differentiate that. And as a consequence, the fiber chartography based on DTI model just give you an empty region and you may be misleaded to um, to reset a large portion of the, the tumor. Um, but this may not be ideal for the preserving uh, functional pathway. In comparison for the GQI method, it's also able to model the free water diffusion. So there's an ISO map here. So in the ISO map is showing that 
uh, some region there's a lot of peritumal edema. But the, the anisotropy method is called a quantitative anisotropy will avoid the pitfall of FA though, and also showing that like, the, there are preserved, some fiber you could preserve here. So thank you for watching this video and hope this will help you make a decision how which method to choose for surgical planning.